Okay, so while it might not be entirely obvious from the content of the picture frame right now, uh, I've taken up working on the uh, Mission C uh, portable loudspeaker project again. Uh, there's the box sitting right there. Uh, because I got inspired after playing around with these uh, uh, Breeze Audio modules, uh, because uh, I tested to just uh, hooking this one up uh, with my current low pass uh, settings for the subwoofer to the Mission C speakers and it sounded absolutely wonderful. So I've changed plans for this thing and uh, rather than using the uh, modified heatsink the board which I was originally intending to use for this project I'm going to go with one of the Breeze Audio uh, 2.1 boards and this one in particular. Uh, however, there are some issues with doing this, and uh, most notably that would have to do with the gain and input impedance of the amplifier. Because uh, as part of this project I've got two inputs, and both are mono mixed right here in the connector to make everything simple and safe. Since everything's going through 10k resistors here, uh, there's very little risk of any ESD or crap uh, breaking stuff further into the amplifier when you're hooking stuff around. Uh, but the input impedance of uh, one of these boards is relatively low since we've got to these uh, uh, now low value 10k potentiometers and following those we've got the TPA 3116s which are set for 32 decibels of gain which gives them alone an input impedance of about 15k and with 10k dividers we just uh, lose a lot of signal levels uh, but since we're essentially dividing uh, to ground after these 10k resistors, uh, the result was uh, something like the signal level got cut in free or something silly like that. I just uh, uh, had way too little gain on this board to make it very useful with uh, the sources which might not have very high output level. So I did some digging around, tried swapping with potentiometers around, but really there was no easy way of making this board behave properly uh, when connected to a 10k input impedance. So what I've done to remedy that is to build, uh, I actually nicked an op-amp from one of the other uh, 2.1 boards, and I've made this little uh, input impedance matching thing. Since this entire thing is um, running in mono, uh, I've got uh, two channels to play with one signal with. Uh, so, the way this board is set up is uh, one of the op amps uh, is just uh, uh, an AC coupled uh, buffer, unity gain buffer. Nothing fancy at all. Uh, but the second stage uh, is uh, connected up as a very high gain circuit. Uh, I intended it to have about three times gain, but it turned out to be a lot more. I'm just doing my calculations wrong. Uh, but we have a r roughly 10 decibel voltage gain in this thing. And uh, the result of that uh, is that I can run this board exactly as I feel like and almost push it into clipping uh, with no more than a uh, roughly half a volt input signal. So we can have a quick look at the scope. Uh, there should be something going in. So we've got a half input signal. I'm playing some public domain music on the computer. And we are at uh, 500 millivolts per division. So we have, um, you know, just shy of one volt of input. And uh, let's swap that over to the uh, one that's connected to the output of the amplifier. Uh, keep in mind we're just watching one of the one half of the output, so the output voltage is actually going to be double uh, what we see on the scope uh, since it's a bridged uh, amplifier. Uh, so let's just uh, turn the volume up and hope that there's some suitable music. Uh, and I should note one of the big reasons uh, for requiring this large amount of gain on this amplifier is uh, since I'm using this board to essentially overdrive any a rather tiny loudspeaker, which I'm hoping to get to down to very low frequencies, I'm going to need very, very, very high signal levels uh, for the so-called subwoofer. And uh, that essentially limits me to having the uh, stereo, the uh, mid-range and tweeters uh, set to about uh, half or even less than half of the gain. It might even be 10 decibels less gain than the subwoofer in order to get a decent low frequency performance out of it. 
uh, but let's just uh, turn it up and see what happens. If we can get any suitable music going. Uh, what's... Uh, Zero Rhythm Dollar Boy, that one's got lots of bass. So if we just turn the volume up and you're not going to be able to hear me. We can just achieve very loud volumes, especially with a subwoofer. I'm not, I'm now turned the level of that up to maximum. So if we just to do you like that, the amplifier is set to about one third volume now, and we are almost pushing the subwoofer amplifier into clipping by doing that, and we can just reach silly signal levels with just a one volt input signal. And if we just uh, have a look at the scope, if I turn the left and right channels up again. We're getting the better part of a 20 volts peak to peak out of our 1 volt peak to peak input signal. So, now I've just got to uh, piggyback back that board onto uh, this board somehow and make all that work. Uh, other modifications I've done to this board are I've hot glued everything together to make it a bit more sturdy since it was mechanically very uh, dodgy to begin with. And uh, I've replaced that capacitor there Originally a 1 microfarad electrolytic with a 100 nanofarad uh, ceramic of somewhat good quality. And this is to act as a high pass filter on the uh, mid range uh, output. It starts to roll off at uh, around 150 hertz and just, you know, you know, it's just a first order filter, so it's not very sharp, but it's just slowly rolling off the low end of it. So that uh, uh, I don't run the uh, mid-range and tweeter into clipping even if I'm blasting a lot of volume and just trying to get a lot of bass out of it. I've also replaced these two potentiometers. This is the main volume and that's the bass potentiometer with uh, mono parts and uh, that's just because uh, that's what's mounted in the actual chassis over there. <laughs> that's what made and I wanted to see if it worked and it works excellent. I've just paralleled up both channels for them. So the plan now is to mount this board into the uh, case uh, after I've done the op amp hack and uh, uh, I'm essentially just going to calibrate this potentiometer uh, one time and uh, let it sit inside the case inaccessible from the outside because this is just the level for the uh, mid-range driver. It doesn't have to be externally adjustable because I can just, I've got an adjustment for the subwoofer uh, on the output. Uh, I'm also using the uh, third channel, uh, since, since I have the subwoofer channel connected to the subwoofer and I've got the uh, one of the stereo channels connected to my mid-range, uh, I'm also using the other stereo channel uh, to just uh, drive an external speaker output here. I've cut some traces here and uh, this wire is going to go straight to that amplifier. So. Uh, that's a quite considerable improvement with using one of these 2.1 boards over these uh, uh, just uh, pure stereo boards. Uh, I've now got a dedicated channel for driving an external speaker. It's still mono, of course, since we are mono mixing right at the input, but uh, it's going to make this device quite a bit more useful if you want to set it up uh, semi-permanently somewhere. Now, I'm not going to go into more detail right now, I just wanted to show a little update since I was quite happy to uh, figure out that these boards work so well in this application and I'm a bit proud of my little op-amp circuit there because I'm admittedly very bad with op-amps. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.